So off the back of palindromes, this one is all about anagrams, and you would also be using substrings in here, and you're manipulating strings to see whether two words are an anagram of each other. So when I say anagrams, what do I mean by that? Well, all of these words or phrases are anagrams of each other. So, for example, angel is the same letters as glean, but in a different order. Night is the same as thing. Astronomer could be moon starer. The Morse code equals here come dots. Um, same letters rearranged in a different order, or really because I'm doing computing, I should talk about the same characters, because spaces, for example, matter to us in just the same way as a letter would. The computer isn't going to draw a distinction between that. We're just looking at ASCII characters in here. There are three different approaches that I could take to this. First one is about sorting all the letters. One way of doing this, and a kind of classic algorithm for, for looking at an anagram, would be you take all the letters in a word, you sort them into alphabetical order, and then you see if these two sorted strings match. So you might have a string that you know has repetition, maybe like two A's and then three B's and one C. And if you've got that twice and your two strings match, then you've got anagrams. The second approach would be to count the letters. And this is probably what a, a human would do if they were looking at it, um, not from a programming point of view. So you loop through your string, you count how many times each letter comes up, and then you loop through the second string and you count up how many times each letter comes up and you see your two counts match. And if they do, it must be an anagram because you've got the same number of letters. And then the third one is hashing. Now, I considered whether it was worth doing this. Um, I'm not going to go into hash functions because I think it overcomplicates this. But if you do want to look at how hash functions work, I'll pop a link to a more general video about hashing in there and how you could use hash functions I'll not specifically go over it and that video is not going to be about using it for anagrams, that'll be using it for things like security and passwords and checking that a file has been transmitted correctly So sorting the letters This algorithm is relatively straightforward, depends whether you've got to do the sorting yourself or not So first of all if you take two strings as inputs and then you loop through the strings and you sort the characters into alphabetical order so let's say string 1 is the word triangle, and string 2 is the word integral. If I sort those letters into alphabetical order for triangle, and then I sort the letters into alphabetical order for integral, including any repetition, then I could see actually that makes the same sorted string. So those must be anagrams of each other. I've got a piece of Python code here that does it, and it's really simple if you can use built-in functions, or if you're thinking in terms of like National 5 and higher predefined functions. So using Python's built-in sorted function, I've got two phrases here, phrase one and phrase two, astronomer and moon starer. I sort the characters A to Z, so I'm using this sorted function, which is not something that we cover in the SQA courses. Now that would work for a string, it would work for an array of values that you're passing in, which in Python terms is a list. So I've got S1 is the sorted phrase one and S2 is the sorted phrase two. If those two sorted phrases match each other, then we must have an anagram. If you want to explore that sorted um, function, because you've maybe never used it before, and it's like I say, it's not in the SQA courses, if you want to play around with it, here's another example that's not for an anagram, but it's just an, an example of sorting. So I've got an array of names, and I've called that names1, and then I've got an array that I'm calling names2, and that's a sorted version of names1. So if I put Jamie, Lucy, Deborah, Chuck, Peter, and then I run that, and you can try running this code yourself, I'll not put the results up, you should get a sorted version of that, so you'll get it back in alphabetical order. Run it, see what results you get. And then what happens if you do things like you've got two names that start with the same letter, but one is a capital letter, one is a small letter or lowercase letter, what happens? What happens if you include spaces, if you include upper and lowercase letters, symbols, digits? Play around with it and see what you get. Try different data types as well, not just a string. See what you can do with it. So going back to this piece of code that was about sorting the letters into order, and I'm not doing the sorting algorithm here, I'll kind of leave that to advanced higher where you would learn sorting algorithms. If we look at phrase one and phrase two, instead of using maybe astronomer and moon starer, say I tried conversation and voices ran on. Now in human terms, if you like, if you showed that to somebody, you could say it's an anagram, but for the computer it's not. Why not? Because it's got spaces in it. So conversation does not many spaces, but voices rant on has got two spaces in it. You get the same sort of thing with vacation time equals I am not active. There are spaces in both of them, but there are more spaces in one than in the other. So how would you actually deal with that? Well, 
I've put a couple of Python functions on there that you could go and look up for yourself, right, and see whether you could solve this problem. So using these two functions, if you go and look those up and see what you can find out about them and look up some examples of them being used, how could you apply them to this situation? Now, another algorithm that we could use is counting the letters. And I've said there it's faster, right? And I'll get into that at the end of the video, why this is faster, because it, it looks as if it's more code. The way this works, you have 26 counter variables. So you're counting how many times A appears and how many times B appears and so on. And if you do it for each letter of the alphabet, you're going to have 26 counters. You're going to put those in an array once I show you the code. We loop through the string and we count how many times you find each letter. Then we loop through the second string and we say how many times you find each letter. And if those pattern of counts match, if the first one has the same number of A's as the second one and the first one has the same number of B's and the same number of C's and all the way up to Z and it matches all the way, then that must be an anagram. Now there's a way to make it even more efficient. You loop through the first string and you say how many times you find each letter. And then as you loop through the second string, you take one off. So effectively, if you've added one onto the count in the first loop, you're taking one off in the second loop. And then, if any of these counters aren't zero at the end, you've not got the same number of A's or the same number of B's. In both versions, we're going to use ASCII numbers. So instead of having lots of if statements, because if you're thinking to yourself already, how do I do this? You don't want to have, if it was A, add one to the A counter. If it was B, add one to the B counter. If it was C, add one to the C counter. There's a way that we can do that with ASCII codes. So if you haven't used this before, now it comes up in the higher cost spec, it's not in National 5, although you would know what ASCII is, you wouldn't be programming with it. Each character has got an ASCII number. Now when I say character, I mean like uppercase letters, lowercase letters, spaces, digits, symbols. In Python, we can get the ASCII number for any character using ORD, this little function. So if I said ORDA, that would give me 97. And if I said like ORDB, that would give me 98 and C would be 99, and so on for the whole of the, the lowercase alphabet. The uppercase alphabet is in there as well, it's just got different numbers. Now, how could I use that in this code? Well, say I want to find where in the alphabet something is. If I say ORD A, so I know that that's 97, minus 97, well, I'm going to get 0, so A is going to be 0. And if I do the same thing with B, it's going to be 98 minus 97, so it's going to be 1. And then if I do the same thing with 99 minus 97, that's going to mean C is 2. And that could give me the alphabet almost like shunted along so that the alphabet is starting at 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 25. And that's going to be useful for this piece of code because it means that we can then treat it like an array. So we can say letter 0, letter 1, letter 2, letter 3, up to letter 25, instead of having to use like 97 up to 100 and whatever Z is. So I've got a piece of Python code here and I'm starting off with a boolean that we'll, we'll refer to as a kind of flag variable and I just mean that I'm setting it to true at the start because I'm going to assume that everything is an anagram but as I loop through if I find any reason to think it's not an anagram then I'll change that and I'll set it to false. If at the end if it's still true it means it must have been an anagram because we never found any reason to say that it wasn't. I've got a, an array or a list here so I've got 26 zeros. Then I've got two strings. So in this case, I've used astronomer and moon starer. Now I know that those are anagrams of each other. Now I've got my loops. So I'm going to loop through string one. So for the character in string one, and if you haven't seen this particular syntax for a loop, it's just like writing for I in range the length of string one, but it's a kind of shorthand way of doing it. So I'm saying for each character in the string, it's sort of doing the substring for me as well. So this character one, that's actually a substring. Count, and then this bit. Now, see this was an A, I could have count 97, and then I could have count 98 and count 99. But remember I said that we're shifting those numbers backwards, so that instead of 97 to 100 and whatever, they're going to start at zero. So the way to make A a zero is to get the ASCII number for whatever that character is, take away 97, that will shunt it down the way so that it's starting at 0, and then plus equals 1 mean that we're adding 1 to the counter. Once we've finished that loop, so I've done the whole string, I look at the second string, taking one character at a time, and this time, if the character matches, instead of adding 1, I'm going to use the same counter, I'm going to subtract 1. So if the first loop adds on a character, 
and then you encounter the same character in the second loop, you'll take it back off and it'll end at zero. If you add one on, but you don't take it off, that must mean the character wasn't in the second string, so they weren't anagrams. Or if you never add anything, but you take it off, you're going to get a negative number, and that'll mean it was in the second string, but it wasn't in the first one. So again, it's not an anagram. So I'm going to take one back off. Now that should mean that if these were anagrams of each other, at the end of it, I should have zero in each of these counters. If I've got anything other than zero, it's not an anagram. What I want to do is check, is it an anagram? So I could loop through my arrays and I could say something like for i in range 26, because I know how many of them there are, if count i is not zero, then it must not be an anagram. Is anagram equals false. Now, what happens if your strings are different lengths to start with? They're going to be obviously different. They couldn't possibly be an anagram, but your algorithm doesn't actually check that. It still loops through and counts every letter. Now, if I had two strings that were different lengths, I could build in a little kind of shortcut that avoids testing everything. You could say, if the length of string one is different from the length of string two, it couldn't possibly be an anagram. So you set as anagram to false. But it's only worth doing that if you then have an else and inside that else you put all the rest of the code that was checking the individual letters and counting those because this way if you've got two strings that are different lengths you don't need to check all the individual characters and that can save your algorithm a bit of time. Now challenges here for both algorithms. The second algorithm that I did it, it only works for the lowercase letters a to z. What about spaces or what about uppercase letters? Can you modify the algorithm yourself to work with those? Think about how you're going to have to expand the alphabet that it uses. A to Z, you, you could have an expanded alphabet because you might want a reason to to treat upper and lowercase letters differently or you might want to just convert all your uppercase to lowercase if you've got the whole string as lowercase um, and handle it that way. You can do that as well. You could add in spaces, you could add full stops, you could decide how many symbols you want. You might even go for the whole ASCII alphabet. So see if you can expand it so that it works with some of those anagrams that have spaces in them. And then the second one, um, if you're doing advanced hire and if you've done sorting, or even if you're not, if you just think it, it, you, you want a little challenge, see whether you could write your own sorting algorithm for algorithm one. Algorithm one uses that built-in Python sorting function. Can you write your own sort instead of doing that? Um, it's probably not something that you're going to be able to work out in your head if you've never done sorting. But if you want to look up different sorting methods and compare them, you'll be able to find some Python code um, for different sorts and see if you can do that yourself. You could use the, the ORD function, that ORD, which is what I used to convert the string into its ASCII values. And you would have to do that so that you're not really comparing if, if A is less than B, you're comparing is 97 less than 98. All right, so see if you can try that yourself. That one is quite challenging. Um, and I've still got a few more of these kind of algorithm challenges to to do. Uh, I've got one about pi, uh, approximating pi. I've got um, one about something called reverse Polish notation, which is um, a way of representing calculations inside the computer.